Godelia is the result of the following formula passion, perseverance, and tenacity. The Garcia Rodriguez family, founders of the winery, created Godelia with one thing in mind to not be satisfied until they reach excellence. Their enthusiasm for viticulture in over 35 acres of vineyards spread through different lots at different heights and orientations. Agriculture is the base of the project and the passion of their founders. The team at Godelia aren't a family, although they care for the project as if it were their own. They put their backs into getting the best out of the varieties they harvest, Godello, Mencia and Doña Blanca. their hearts into creating a wine reference with a DNA that reflects the feminine delicacy with which it's made, never forgetting their origins. Passion, perseverance and tenacity. Enjoy the result. So, okay. okay, so uh, we are going to start uh, with our presentation to introduce uh, a little bit of, uh, of us, of the winery, the brand, and who we are. In uh, Modelia, it's, uh, it's the name of the winery and also the name of our brand. And it was created uh, to put in value the two native grapes we have in the region. This is a blend between Godello and Mencia. And this is uh, also uh, something that will uh, be easy to say, easy to remember. And the main thing for us is uh, because uh, it sounds like a female name. So we want to put this kind of essence in our brand. And this is the reason we, we decided uh, to call it Godelia. Some of you know our winery. We are in, uh, in Bierzo. And uh, this is our, our building. This is where we make our wine. And it started in 2009. It's a family-owned uh, winery, and uh, the owners are originally from Galicia, from uh, Melide. And Melide is also uh, a stop in uh, El Camino de Santiago. That is uh, something that is very important for us. Uh, you can see in our logo, we are using the, the shell. Well, it's our shell because it's personalized for us. It's uh, a blend between El Camino and also the wine wall. And uh, the, the Camino is very important for us because it brought a lot of heritage to our, our area when it started. Uh, the way we made wine now is not uh, like Roman did in the past. It's more like the French style. And all the monks brought this uh, style to make wine to Bierzo when they made El Camino to Santiago de Compostela. So we have uh, this uh, heritage here because now we are a wine region uh, because of that. Uh, we, we conserve our vineyards, we conserve the, the tradition because during uh, uh, that uh, time, the monks wrote to Bierzo and they started to focus in our grape varieties. And, uh, and now this is the way we produce wine. And uh, we have a lot of churches, a lot of heritage. And you can see in uh, the whole Spain, uh, all the wine thing, the very old uh, wine regions are very related uh, to, the, to the religious uh, Christianists uh, principally. We are uh, from here, 200 kilometers uh, to Santiago. So we can see that the earth in the Camino is like the last stop before entering Galicia. And this is where uh, the French Camino starts to become green because we are in a, in a mountain region. It's uh, like the green part of Spain and with uh, very similarity climate and landscape to Galicia. In here, we are a, a, a nine people team. We are not a family. Uh, it's a family only winery, but we are workers, but we, we, we feel like a family. Even we, we met here and we are very close to, to the project because we have been here for a long time and 
we all love the wine world. So for us to be part of Godelia and be part of uh, developing uh, the brand, uh, the project, and even the wine profiles by uh, ourselves, it's amazing. And also because uh, Vitente, who is the owner, uh, allows us uh, to, to prove, to, to develop, to, to explore, and to do new things because we are quite young and we want to do new things like every time and we have new challenges uh, almost every week more or less depending on the time where you know it's not the best time but we try to make uh, uh, new things uh, almost all the time so uh, i will let uh, olga to explain a little bit of our vineyards to you right. um first of all uh, i would like to put in value the uh, patrimony that we have in El Bierzo, because um, uh, some of you uh, know we we have the, the we are the region with the biggest surface in all vineyards. That means that uh, 96, 97 percent of the whole vineyard in El Bierzo is very old. All means more than 60, more than 70, and sometimes more than 100. Sometimes we don't know how old are they, how, how old are exactly are they. Mm -hmm. So it's very important uh, for our wines, for our wine making, and for our work in the, in the vineyards. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, is because of a reason, and it is because people here feel very close to the, the land and the earth. And we have very, uh, very little uh, plots and vineyards. And people used to keep them in the families. So it's because of that we could conserve all that small vineyards, very, very old. And it's because of that we have uh, 120, 150, uh, 15 uh, old year uh, Mencias, for example. Um, in, in total, we, we work 40 hectares. In the, in the picture, you, you can see one of our, of our vineyards. Uh, we, we have uh, 35 uh, Bayon, and we rent uh, other five, and we work uh, other small vineyards that are owned for all people. We keep people working in their uh, plants, but we manage them how to work the, the, the vineyards. Um, talking about uh, grape varieties, we have uh, three uh, grape varieties that are autochthonous. Uh, we, we will have uh, three more, but we, we, <laughs> we will talk about that <laughs> after. But now uh, we have two whites and one red. The whites are Godello, which is the, the, the main uh, white variety for us, and Doña Blanca. Godello is from the northwest, is uh, in here and in Galicia, in the north of Portugal, and it is native from, from here, from the northwest. Uh, it is very special variety because uh, it uh, almost uh, disappeared in the 50s because it has a very low uh, yield in, in grapes and in juice, and people uh, used to remove it or, or, or change it uh, for other productive varieties. Um, in Godelia, we always trust uh, a lot in Godelia, and we have a big surface in, in Godello, and for us it's a very special variety because it's very versatile. We can make uh, young wines, we can make uh, aged wines, we can make sparklings, a lot of different kinds of, of wines with Godello. The other wine is Doña Blanca, which is native from here. Uh, it is very special because uh, we only have a few uh, hectares. And it is uh, usually uh, planted in the middle of the reds, in the middle of uh, old uh, menfias. Because pe old people used to make wines mixing everything, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. 
And I think they, um, they were very uh, smart planting their, uh, their old vineyards with the exact plant that they want in, in their wines. So we use it and we, we keep it uh, just a little bit to make a blend with our uh, Godello because it uh, gives some special uh, things in our wine, like citric or, or fennel or, or some things. And uh, the most important thing, because it is from here and we want to keep it. And for the reds, we use Menthia, which is uh, from, the, from the Northwest as well. Portugal and uh, and uh, uh, Galicia, Bierzo, and um, it's a special variety as well. But we are, we are in love. For us, all of them are special. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in fact, does uh, because uh, the same as uh, as uh, with Godello, for us is very versatile. It's a very delicate variety with a medium uh, skin, it's not very, uh, very big skin, it's, it's quite delicate. Um, you can make wines um, very fresh and easy to drink, and you uh, can make wines with more complexity and structure. Um, everything depends on uh, where are your, your vineyards, because we, we have a lot of only one variety, but a lot of different places where 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 we have uh, planted menthia, highest parts in, in different soils. So we have a lot of different wines of menthia to make the, the perfect balanced wine. Um, is, uh, uh, could you pass the uh, talking about our soils? Uh, Olga, I have one one quick question. Um, is there um, a trend to plant more um, more Dona Blanca, or is it a great variety that's disappearing? Uh, there, there, there is uh, people planting Dona Blanca uh, because um, every day I think. Uh, People is more interested in uh, Doña Blanca, and the same with uh, Jerez or Palomino. We we don't uh, we don't want to plant more Jerez because it, it is here, but we are trying to make wines with Jerez because usually uh, people or or us uh, sell uh, the Jerez to big wineries or cooperatives, and now we are trying to make uh, different wines. At uh, and the same with, with Doña Blanca. Day, day by day uh, are more people interested in, in that variety. So I'm uh, sure that it's uh, some people planting, not us. We are planting uh, other varieties that today are recognized by the DO and that are from here and almost disappear. All varieties like Estaladilla and like Merenzao. Maybe you know Marenzao from Galicia, the same variety that Bastardo, and it's the same variety that Trousseau. Trousseau, I don't know how to spell it in, in French, sorry. But it's the same variety, and it is from uh, native here as well, but it is almost disappeared. So now we are going to plant one hectare of Merenzao and one hectare from Estaladinha, which is only from El Bierzo. Uh, not more places. And as well, uh, there is some people making wines with Garnacha Tintorera, which is in the middle of the red, uh, of the red uh, old uh, vineyards. There's only a few. And, and we made a wine this year as well with Garnacha Tintorera. We have only one barrique. We, we will see. <laughs> uh, we, we are playing with different things. <laughs> I'm talking about our soils. Uh, Olga, can I, can I ask a question? So how widely planted is Godello compared to Mencia in the region? Yeah. Do you mean in terms of uh, surface? 
Yeah. What, there, what is the percentage of Gadeo uh, versus Minthia in, in the region? In the region, I think it's only a 2%, 2 or 3% of the whole uh, vineyards. Sarah has the exact the number. Well, the Formentia is uh, 74, 74% uh, 74, uh, and Godejo now is 44%. But this is will uh, this will change. Everyone is planning. It's uh, a, a vineyard with us with, with has 30 hectares of surface. It's not uh, the the oldest that we have. It is uh, about 30 years old, and it is the 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 vineyard where we have mainly the Godello and the, most of the Mencias for the young Mencia, for Viernes, which is our, our first uh, wine. The next one is El Castro. It's a very special place because it's where, where the, the Bierzo was born. It's the, the, the center of the, of the area. It's a old uh, Celtic uh, place. We have five hectares there. And to get these five or the other 30 hectares, the owner of the winery um, had to, I don't know how, how, but he, he uh, had to buy uh, plot by plot to more than 50 different persons. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how he could to do it, mm -hmm. but it, it takes uh, a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we have Mencias um, and some uh, very good Godello there. And uh, the rest of the areas are um, those little plots that we were talking about in different places with uh, different uh, heights and mainly um, with uh, slates on the soil. You can see the, the, the slates in that soil. It's a very poor soil with a deep, uh, deep, um, I uh, slope. deep slopes and, and very old mm -hmm. vineyards and the, the most special ones for sure. Well, in, in terms of the, the working, uh, well, we work as uh, um, Sustainable uh, uh, as, as we can. We never use um, herbicides or synthesis chemicals. We, we use uh, uh, natural grass on the soils to keep soils alive and uh, to keep uh, water uh, in, the, in the soil. And we, we work almost everything by hand in the, in the harvest and we, we try to, to work as, as best as we can. And since like last year, we started all the papers to the uh, uh, organic certification. So it takes three years. So we think that in, uh, if, if we uh, make everything well, <laughs> we will have the certificate in uh, Viña Ecologica, Organic uh, vineyards in, in two years more. And uh, talking about the winemaking, um, well, well, if you have uh, good uh, grapes, we 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 think that you don't have to to make a lot of things in the in the winery. So for us, the the, the wines. Uh, we, we make the wines in the vineyard and we, we spend a lot of effort and, and money and time uh, taking care of the, of the vineyards. So uh, in, the, in, the, in the winery, we, we try to make everything uh, touching the less <laughs> as we can mm -hmm. and, and let the wines uh, uh, do uh, with the, the best ways. We, we already know uh, which grapes uh, goes every wine. So depending on the, the, the final wine, we work more or less uh, with the uh, pumping over, the listage, pillage, and, and all that things. <laughs> I don't know if we have time enough to, to talk about, about uh, winemaking or, or all that. Uh, what things.
So Sarah, if you want to, well, I mean, uh, in the way making, uh, I, I would say that Olga is very respectful in the way she she makes the wine, and uh, she decides uh, the, the the style of wine in the vineyard. So she knows from the vineyard uh, which grapes are going to which wine. So there's grapes for Viernes and grapes for Pianza. And uh, she manages uh, every year uh, the way she's going to, to to age the wine. So not every year is the same. Yeah. Some years uh, she uses uh, more in barrels. Some years, because this is the reason she says that the, the, the wine is made in the vineyard because the character of the grape is uh, marked from uh, from the harvest. And then uh, when it comes to the to the winery, is uh, it's not because they, they don't have work to do; they have work to do. But uh, they they try to be very respectful and respect what they have uh, from the vineyard. I, I mean, I think this is uh, what uh, she she wants to say. But it really explains much better. <laughs> but she's not going to tell uh, she uh, her secrets for sure. <laughs> So going back uh, to Bierzo, Bierzo like uh, like uh, Dio uh, started in the late 80s, it was in uh, 89, so it's uh, quite new Dio compared with, with others. Even in here, the Romans and even the Celtics started to produce wine, uh, we are quite new compared with others. And uh, in terms of location, we are in Castillo, uh, in Leon province, and we are in the border with Galicia and also Asturias. We are uh, close enough from the sea, because uh, we are like one hour and a half by car uh, from the sea, and we are also inland. So it's a blend between the, these two uh, styles of climate. We are protected from uh, the Galicia bad weather by the mountains, but it's really, really uh, green and raining here. And we are also protected uh, from the continental climate by the, by the mountains, but we still have a uh, uh, high temperatures or low temperatures, and even uh, snow, and, and for sure uh, we have uh, uh, freezing. I mean, it's more than climate, but it's mild. It's uh, it's very close to the to the sea, and I would say that if we have to choose between the two climates, it would be more more Atlantic than uh, continental in, in here, because our climate is more similar to Galicia than to Ribera del Duero, uh, for sure. Are you in, in here, the rain uh, shadow at all? Sorry? Are you in the rain shadow at all? Meaning, is it significantly drier in Bierzo than it would be in some of the regions of Galicia, like Ribera Sacra or Val de Ores? Well, not really, because uh, in uh, Ribera Sacra and uh, Val de Ores, we are, uh, it's uh, similar, but Ribera Sacra is in, in the Seal River. But we are uh, separated by a mountain. But we are very, very similar to the mates. We are uh, probably uh, less, uh, we have uh, less uh, weight than in the part of Coruña or the north of Galicia. But probably we are uh, more wet than the south of Galicia, like Vigo or Rias Baixas. I mean, it's, uh, it depends. But now the weather is changing a lot. So, uh, but it's, very similar. Uh, we have a lot of uh, things uh, very similar to, to especially Val de Orgas. And uh, well, in, in Ribeira Sacra it's different because they are in a, in a river so, and we are in the mountains. So it's uh, a bit different. Probably we are colder than, than them, more continental than, than Ribeira Sacra. We, we are more continental. I would say more continental, but uh, I would say that depending on the vintage, we have more Atlantic character in the in the vintage, or more Atlantic character. But the the thing is that we have uh, rain between uh, 500, 500, 500 uh, millimeters the the, the dry uh, years and nine hundred the the wet uh, years. So. Um, it, this is uh, could, could be quite Atlantic, uh, 
um, uh, or, or quite continental, so it depends. But uh, uh, we are very continental in terms of temperature uh, because we have a lot of difference between day and night, and that is very uh, a very continental. We have in summer 36 years or 35 uh, degrees, uh, sorry, for uh, in the day, and maybe uh, 10 or 12 during the night. It is very nice for us for the acidity and for the ripening. Uh, so I would say continental, but with Atlantic uh, influence. Uh, yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. It's a blend between uh, the two uh, climates, and uh, uh, our vineyards are places that from the 400 meters to 1,000 meters over the sea level. This is uh, as far we know the, where the, the vineyards are in Bierzo. And they are uh, with different orientations and, and the slopes, and they are uh, very different, uh, one way for, of the other, uh, because the, the plots are very different. We have every kind of plot in here, because the, 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 the region is very irregular in the, in the landscape. And in terms of numbers for the Rio Bierzo, we are quite small. We, well. Not, uh, not very small, but we produce only uh, 16 uh, million of bottles per, per year, a good year for sure. And it's made uh, by 79 uh, wineries. We don't have big groups for the moment, but we have a very big uh, cooperative here in Tacabel, the same city than the winery, and they are producing more or less half of the production of, uh, of the region. And the, for, for beers, it's uh, uh, a big uh, difference from, from other parts that there's uh, a lot of owners of a lot of uh, very small plots. So it means uh, in 10 hectares, you can have, uh, I don't know, 20 owners or less. Even so one hectare. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so as you see in the numbers, we have like uh, 3,000 hectares or a little bit less. And uh, we have uh, 2,000 owners. So it's like about one hectare and something for per owner. And half of them are working for the cooperatives. So and in terms of grape production, this is the, the official uh, numbers, but it will change. Probably this carbon will change because uh, some of the age of are, are starting this year to produce. So I mean, I, I would say that the yield will grow until 10 or 12 percent in, in production. And it will be probably uh, from, uh, we'll take the number from Palomino or, I don't know, probably uh, Palomino. I would say nobody is changing Mencia because Mencia will be the, the, will be the queen of Biasno. Even if Godejo now it's growing a lot, uh, I, I would say that Mencia will be the most planted grape, uh, even uh, if we grow a lot in, in Godejo. So now, uh, now uh, uh, talking about Bierzo, we want to introduce you a little bit of the new regulation that is the, the zoning uh, place. This is something similar like the Grand Cru, so this kind of stuff. So I will let Olga explain you because she will do better than me. Uh, yeah, it's a, a new, a new, very good thing in the in the DO because uh, I think uh, Bierzo is the, the second. I, I don't know. If, the first one was Priorat, and we are the second DO, and it was uh, inspiring uh, by well by uh, Palacios family uh, for sure, and inspiring uh, for um, Burgundy uh, ordering of the of the soil. So. Uh, as I said, we have a lot of small, special plots that are uh, unique uh, in the in the beer. So uh, uh, we we made some changes in, in terms of the the varieties. We introduced uh, two more, the Merenzao and the Estaladina, because there are from here. And well, you know, when you made the rules uh, in in 1989, they don't uh, think about uh, Merentau or Stalinia because uh, it was almost disappeared. So uh, now 
we we put that waves again in the in the in the rules of the deal and uh, the people of the deal uh, and the wineries as well and the and the and the um, uh, as well uh, we work all together to make a map uh, of the best uh, areas the best crews of the of the of the the whole uh, region so now if you, you can see the the new uh, uh, sovereign uh, things that we can do so we will have what well, we actually have because it is approved uh, the the first step in that uh, pyramid is the 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 beer wine the do wine and you can make that wine from grapes from all over the, the area with uh, a yield of uh, 11,000 kilos per hectare that I think almost nobody has uh, <laughs> as much in, well, not, not in, in our best uh, dreams. We, we don't have uh, 11,000 and, and we don't want but uh, the next step, a new thing, is the Vino de Villa, which is a kind of uh, wine from uh, one, uh, one village. For example, Cacabelos, that we, we, that we are, uh, if we make a wine with different plots of vineyards in the same uh, municipality, uh, it could be uh, Vino de Villa. We, uh, we have a restriction uh, in the kilo per hectare, uh, when, when we um, go up in in the in the category, we have less uh, yield. I think it is uh, twenty percent less than eleven thousand kilo per hectare. Uh, the next step is uh, vino de paraje. Uh, paraje is uh, um, a group. Uh, for example. Uh, uh, I don't know, but El Castro, we, we have uh, five hectares in El Castro. El Castro is uh, uh, in Cacabelos, is the municipality, and we have some vineyards, different ones in El Castro, which is a, a, a small area. And we could make uh, a, a wine from, from all that small parcels in the same area. And uh, if we go up, we have uh, the wine from special plot, special vineyard, which is the same of uh, Grand Cru, with 30% uh, uh, less of the kilos. And after 15 years, uh, if you have a monopole, or a very, very special wine from an iconic uh, vineyard, you can have a Gran Vino de Viña Clasificada, which is the same as uh, La Ermita or uh, La Faragona could be, uh, uh, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And to get uh, the Vino de Viña Clasificada or to get the Gran Vino de Viña Clasificada, there is an expert uh, uh, Committee, committee, committee of experts uh, that are formed for, for people uh, in the wineries. We are training uh, to certificate for that uh, to be sure that uh, it is a different and special uh, wine. Not every plot is able to make a Gran Vino de Viña Clasificada. It has to pass for a uh, tasting uh, with uh, experts that say, okay, it's a, a great and special and iconic wine. Mm -hmm. And more or less is the, the, the new uh, rules in the, in the deal that I think is very, very nice for us. And we are working on, on it, uh, making, uh, well, our selection, for example, today it's, uh, uh, you know, the, the Villa, because we have uh, three plots that are in the same uh, municipality, but different places in the municipality, the highest parts with the slates and, and all the things that, that you know. Uh, but and now we are uh, uh, making uh, separately 
all that small plots and we are uh, thinking about uh, bottling uh, Ornija for one part or Corujon for, for, for other part or se separate. We are separate all the time just to see uh, what is uh, better or more special or different in terms of uh, complexity, acidity or, or whatever. And we are, uh, uh, we are thinking about, uh, about it. So we, we will uh, see how, um, how we uh, will labeling or, or bottling is we are working now. Well, I, I, I think it's not easy because uh, there's a, a lot of uh, stakes you, you, you need to do uh, to get uh, the, the Gran Vino de Viña Clasificada. At least it takes uh, 15 years, so it's uh, a long time. The main thing is, is that we need uh, to, to focus on the, on the quality in terms of uh, quantity, and this is the main reason we need uh, this. Uh, so let's move. Uh, this is the text of the regulation, but uh, we have in the dossier. So let's move to our wines. We are going to explain a little bit of uh, our wines. Actually, Sarah, there were a couple of questions. Um, yes. Before we move on to the specific wines, one was um, was about the, the hours of sunlight. Do you get a lot of a lot of sun exposure in Bierzo? And um, the other question is sun, sunlight, sun exposure for the vines. Ah, well, we um, uh, we have we are home, and in the home we have a lot of different orientations. So our, for example, our better uh, vineyards in in the in the high part of Corujon are uh, southwest facing. But uh, with the all that um, uh, global uh, climate changes, um, every day we uh, are looking for north face uh, vineyard because uh, we have more acidity and more uh, you know, more freshness in 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 that kind of vineyard. So. We are very lucky because we 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 have one variety, but uh, a lot of different wines. We we can uh, <laughs> look a wine uh, 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 orientations, for example. If I uh, if I have uh, uh, well, I, I always make the, the blends or the assemblage. I uh, so I would say, uh, I don't know, 50 bottles, different ones, and, and we have uh, uh, Puente de Miel, which is a plot which is north-facing, more acidic, more uh, direct uh, wine, uh, but less structure. We have El Castro with uh, less acidity, but more uh, mouth. And um, all of that different orientations, uh, give us uh, things to build the, 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 the wine. So uh, I am very happy to, to have different ones. Uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of years ago, when we, when we studied at the school, uh, the, the, the professors always said, south facing, southwest is the best one. But today, I'm not uh, very sure about that because uh, weather is changing and sometimes we need more north faces or we have a lot of uh, east, west are very nice as well. So depending uh, where are you looking for, uh, it's nice to have uh, all the different uh, things. Thank you. And you mentioned that wineries are planting Palomino. What are the What are they using Palomino for? Um, last uh, vintage, <laughs> I I don't know why, but I yeah, I I played a lot last 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 vintage, 
And we made um, Petrijan Naturel <laughs> with Godello and um, ancestral sparkling wine. And we made a Palomino with uh, skins, like an orange uh, wine. Just to play and to see, because actually we have like 5,000 and 6,000 kilos of Palomino in the middle of the of the old vineyards and we have to make two harvests and, and we, we used to sell it to a big uh, winery and, and they use it for for first uh, wines I, I don't know what to explain our first, first wines yeah. our first prize wine but I think if if Palomino is here we should try to make something interesting so we are playing with uh, with with that, and we make uh, uh, we, we have one barrique, one one barrel with uh, a kind of orange palomino. <laughs> we will see what happens. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. Okay, then let's go back uh, to the wines. Uh, we're going to start by our Godello uh, wines. Uh, when we started, when we selected Godello name, we focused more in Godello than in Mancia because this uh, made us different from the rest. Uh, until five years ago, uh, despite the cooperative, we were the, the private winery uh, which were making more Godello in, in the region. Because we we always uh, thought that the the Bodeño has a very big potential, and this is the reason we have uh, tried to do our best with this uh, grape that we think that is uh, wonderful. It's uh, it's amazing for the Bodeño to can uh, make different spices and different wines. The first of uh, them is Bodeño Cuvée. We are uh, the first one. Uh, making a, a, a traditional method uh, sparkling Godello in the region. It's, uh, it's made, uh, um, we started to make it like uh, seven years ago, but at the beginning it was only for the local market. And it was like, uh, I don't know, like the Palomino, only to try at the beginning because we wanted to try something. But at the end, it, it uh, developed very well. So we decided to include in uh, our ranch. And uh, well, as, as we say, it's made by the traditional method, and it has 22 months um, on leaves. And for us, it's a very special wine because it's uh, it's very different, and we will say that it has a lot of Godello character, but it's a very completely different way to to enjoy Godello. Yeah. And I, I would say this uh, for us, it's very gastronomic and it's very fun to do pairings and uh, this kind of uh, stuff. And it's something that makes us uh, very different because uh, I know we have to compete with other uh, sparkles in the world and Godejo Sparkle is not the most famous, but it's something different and just for fun because we all love bubbles, so it's good to have it. And uh, our main uh, production is uh, Godelia Godejo. It's uh, our uh, our basic. I would say basic Godello, but it's not basic at all. It's a blend, a blend between Godello and Doña Blanca. It is started to, to be 80% Godello and 20% Doña Blanca, but nowadays it will be about 90% Godello, 10% Doña Blanca, because Godello production is growing faster than Doña Blanca. And uh, for this uh, wine, I would say that uh, we started also to to produce uh, wine. Uh, uh, over leaves with leaves, age the wine in the leaves uh, for the for the Godello. And uh, when we started, we decided to, we found the two grape varieties in the vineyard. We decided to make two varietal wines, but at the end we found out that they are better together and separately. So uh, we blend the two, the two wines, and then they stay for five months on leaves in the tank. And for this, uh, we're going to say that it's. Uh, Godello with a very big character is uh, is uh, our basic one because it's the, 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 the most uh, entry level Godello with that. 
But it's not basic at all because with the list, it has a lot of uh, personality, a lot of character. It has a very big mouth. And, well, of, all, all of our wines are very gastronomic, but uh, I would say that this wine is uh, it's very different from uh, other white uh, wines, uh, especially they are changing in the northwest part of Spain. All the DOs and wine production are changing. This is like a, a new uh, a new style of white wines of the northwest part of Spain, of the same Mediterranean. Because in the past they were like very fresh, very dry. And this is more, uh, in my opinion, more elegant. And in Galileo we have uh, like the, the special one. This is uh, our selection. And, uh, <laughs> this is the one we are drinking and this is my favorite. Uh, because I find this, this wine uh, very special. Uh, we, we have a very old vine of Godillo. It's uh, about 80 years. And uh, this uh, vineyard is uh, producing fascinating grapes. So we decided to produce something uh, different uh, of uh, Godillo. And uh, something that gives uh, to Godillo something uh, that uh, can allow for a white wine, white wine to go upper in the level, that this is not common in the, the northwest part of Spain. So this color is uh, a limited solution because it's a very small plot. And it's, uh, it was aged for eight months in French of barrels, but now uh, since 2015, we share with the uh, concrete eggs. So that's way, that way we can uh, focus more in the minerality of the grape because uh, it's, uh, this uh, vineyard is in a very um, mineral place and it has a lot of, uh, the soil has a lot of salinity. Well, it's not that many of years ago, the, uh, the earth was covered by the sea, but there's some places that you can, this kind of salinity that is because no reason, at the end the soil has a reason because that's the heritage of the history. And we want to, to push this because we found this more different probably than the aging barrel. So we prefer to, to share the, the aging barrel with the concrete egg because we are being more uh, respectful with the grape and with the character. And then uh, we move uh, to Menthea. Sarah, with, uh, so, Sarah, before we move on to Menthea, um, what are the differences between Gudeo and Albarino, since they're both kind of from the northwest part of Spain, where, how are they similar? How are they different? I, I would like all this claim better. <laughs> so I think both are uh, very uh, novel uh, varieties, but I would say that uh, Albarino is more uh, aromatic, it's more terpenic variety. Uh, in fact, when you have uh, Albariño grape, if you smell it, the grape smells a lot. And uh, this uh, doesn't happen in, in Godello. And Albariño has much more acidity than, uh, than Godello because of the uh, climate and because of uh, a lot of uh, things. And the Dejo is a variety much uh, more glyceric and I would say um, more shy in, in terms of uh, aromas, but more uh, elegant, uh, I would say, or, or delicate aromas. It's like a, a, a bump uh, fruit or uh, they use more flowery and more uh, uh, like stone fruits, like uh, citrus. I, I say they, they both are very nice and different. The acidity in Godello is not uh, as high as uh, Alvarino, but uh, we, we can talk a lot about the varieties, but it's not only about the variety, because you can make similar wines with Alvarino and Godello. So it depends on uh, terroir, it depends on the people who work the vineyard, it depends on the elaboration. If you make wines uh, very uh, cold, you have more aromas. If you uh, make wines with uh, higher temperature, you have more mouth. So 
it depends on a lot of things, but in general, I would say that uh, the acidity is the, the first difference and big difference. And the, the, in terms of aromas, I, I would say that Algarin is more direct and, and fruit, and Godello is more delicate and more uh, mouthy or, or creamiest and, and more uh, flowery, I, I would say. I don't know if, if I answer your question. Not an easy, easy question, sorry. <laughs> No, perfect. Thank you very much. And and with Gadeo, are you using natural yeasts or are you using uh, commercial yeasts? Uh, usually, uh, we we use dry yeast uh, for the, the big tanks of Gadeo. We we use uh, neutral yeast because uh, we, we don't have uh, we don't want to put any uh, external uh, aroma in our wine. So we use neutral ones, but for the big tanks and the and the and the, the Godelia range, we use it. Uh, but for the the selection, we don't use it because uh, we don't need because it uh, it's a very small uh, size. It's, uh, we make it in a small tank, and we can control much better uh, the fermentations. So for the selections we don't use, for the Godelia, we use it. Okay, thank you. What about malolactic for Godeo specifically? Or do you uh, do you ever put Godeo through full malolactic? I I I, I, I do Do you do you ever put Godeo, the Godeo through full malolactic fermentation? No, malolactic. No. no. No, we, we don't use malolactic because uh, in terms of acidity, we have more or less uh, 6.5 or 7 mass per liter. And uh, usually we, we want to keep all the, all the acidity we need it to, to age the wines. And uh, if, if we make the malolactic, we, we, we lose a little bit and we, we don't need it, uh, to, to use it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then uh, continue with Pierre. Uh, this is our entry level Lucia, and it's uh, uh, it was like the last one to be part of our portfolio because we wanted to start by our Godelia Lucia by the, the Crianza, but at the end we realized that we need. Uh, uh, in 2009, when we started to need to, to, to introduce the Mencia grape in a very uh, honest uh, way. So we use our younger uh, vines to produce uh, this wine that it's, um, I would say that very uh, bright and very Mencia, very pretty, but it's not like a young wine. Uh, it has a, a, a big bowl and a big character. It has uh, hormones on leaves in the, in the tank. And we try to make, to make it like very fun, uh, easy to drink, uh, like very uh, young spirit wine, not young wine, but young spirit wine. But it has, uh, it's very tough as well. I would say that's really easy, really melty and an entry level uh, menthia. Since, uh, I would say that it's five years ago, 14, 15. Since five years ago, uh, we, we have been producing uh, one uh, Mencia Rosé. We, we were the first one in years to, to produce this kind of uh, very pale Rosé, and it was because uh, European asked us uh, to make it. So we tried to do it in 2014, the, the first time, and it was for the US market in, in the beginning. It's, uh, it was a uh, very new and very unique wine. And, and it was like a beef for in our side because in, in here it's like rosé, it's not forbidden, but like in the past it was a clad, claret region. So in here and also in the whole Spain, everybody thinks that rosé wines are not quality wines. Yeah, it is changing right now. Mm -hmm. This is changing, but this kind of a style of, of rosé with very pale color is something completely different. 
that wouldn't uh, uh, have the heritage of the red rosette. So it's, it was something different. And 2014, it was very, very brand new. And made with mantria is something that is not easy to see in the market because um, they are made with garnacha, with other great varieties, but mantia is quite unique. So we make it by blending the mast of the grapes we use for our crianza. So it, it comes from all lines. And it takes like about um, one hour and a half to two hours with the skin. Something that we uh, uh, keep in, put a pipe to <laughs> remove the, the juice. It's almost nothing, yes. So it's, uh, the main thing is, in, when, when, the main thing of this wine that is, we have to run but we discovered things uh, after doing this uh, this rosé. Uh, it's uh, we discovered the more floral part of the mentia because I have to say that in the other wines you can see much uh, the the fruity part of the grape, but in this one uh, you can find something different, very floral. It has a lot of uh, mentia character. It's not a uh, very easy rosé. It's not. Uh, Sweet at all, it has the mencia uh, complexity in the mouth, and I would say that it's uh, uh, I like this rose, it's uh, uh, a good way. The production is quite small because it depends a little bit of the, the vintage character. If it's uh, very concentrated, we can produce less, and if it's a uh, fresher vintage, we can produce more. So that way, the other wine uh, keeps more concentrated, but it's a uh, it's a new thing and it's uh, good to, to kind of promote other side of the Mentia more floral with the, this kind of wine. In, uh, well, this is uh, the kind of style of uh, Bierzo wine. When you think in Bierzo, probably this is uh, the style of wine, uh, the most representative wine in the region. This one is 100% Mentia from from uh, three different soils, the three different soils we have seen previously. And uh, for us, it's the, the best seller, and, and, and this is the most uh, you know, famous wine style in the region. Because uh, here is not the, well, we have young wine, like everywhere, but since we have a lot of old vineyards, people used to, to age in barrel the, the Mancia to, to produce. Uh, the other style wine. And this wine uh, will depend a little bit of the vintage, but it will be between 10 to 12 months in French of barrel. And also the age of the barrels will, will change depending on the vintage character. I'm pretty sure you know this wine very well. So I will go to the next one. And, and uh, the Delia Selection is uh, the same philosophy that in the wine, but in the red. This is where, where we have, uh, I would say, the, the, the treasure of the region. I mean, the, the Mentia, very old uh, uh, vineyards with uh, very poor soils, with uh, state, uh, I mean, the, uh, I mean uh, special grapes, with, uh, full of flavor, full of character. They, they have a lot of personality. This uh, kind of wine is uh, something very selected like its name and very unique and uh, the, for this wine is like in the other selection it produces, all, produces only the best year and uh, there will be new barrels for this uh, for this uh, selection and also French uh, because we only use French oak uh, for our wines and uh, the last one uh, this is no sold in the, in the states yet <laughs> but this is uh, like a, a, a fun thing is something similar to the to the sparkling this is the only uh, late harvest for a um, sweet menthe in the world and it's it's made with one of the parts that we use for the selection and some years when we have a very good weather in the harvest we can leave the grapes in the in the plant and uh, when we can uh, give them some maturation in the plant, in the vineyard, because it's uh, uh, in, a, in a parcel that it has uh, a very, very good ventilation with a lot of air and with a, with a lot of, uh, it's very healthy. But the last year we can produce, we could produce this wine, it was 2015, 
because uh, usually we harvest the rice for this wine in uh, November and we need that to be get the rice so it's not a uh, dry this so we need uh, a little bit of pacification but very healthy and when uh, it comes here we do just like a red wine we stop the fermentation by fall and it ages for 10 months in juice barrels and it's something like uh, it's uh, very fun for food pairings and something different so i i invite you to try the next time and this is uh, all of our presentation so i will uh, stop to share the the screen and if you want to ask us something hola olga me oís ahora so I was going to ask you, what is the aging power for both Godello and Mencia varieties? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, I think uh, in the way uh, that we uh, make our whites, you, you can age uh, our whites for a long time. Uh, actually, uh, Sarah, I don't know if you remember, two or three months ago, we opened uh, in a restaurant a 14, uh, Godelia White, Godelia 14, and it was uh, amazing uh, mm -hmm. because it, it was very alive and it was very, uh, very, very uh, well developed. So I think uh, Godelia, our Godelia is uh, able to, to, to keep for four, five, six, seven years, and, and wine is uh, even better. Uh, but I think it is uh, because of our work in, uh, well, in, the, in the vineyards, for sure, but in the winery, with the, the aging on lease, uh, with their respect, and we, our work to wait, to, to, to our way to work uh, in a reductive uh, way. We always uh, keep the wines for the oxygen and we uh, keep the wines very uh, dirty with the leaves and they uh, eat oxygen and help us to keep the wines for longer. So uh, for me, Godello is a very, very uh, good variety to age. And Mencia, uh, I think, is like a medium um, uh, medium power of, of, of keeping but uh, we we don't know yet but uh, our selection for example the first one was 2009 and um, when, when we open uh, a bottle we discover a different uh, kind of menthia uh, it, uh, lose the fruit part, but uh, it develops very nice. Uh, you use good uh, barriques and, and good uh, balance between uh, fruit acidity. But I would say that Godello has more. Uh, uh, well, I'm not sure I'm able to uh, uh, age for for a long, long time. I trust a lot in, in aged bodegas. Uh, but also it's because it's more surprising the bodega than in Mencia. I mean, in here everybody puts or focuses on Mencia in the past, and now we are discovering that the aged bodega, like these kind of uh, old white wines, uh, we are discovering that they, they, they are in a very good result, but in the past it was something that nobody will think about it here. I mean, you can try something from the 70s, but it will be a menthia. It will be, well, probably nice. It depends on the wine. But I mean, for us, uh, well, we are really focused in Bodega, but it was very surprising to, to, to see or to discover the age potential of the Bodega, especially in the classic one because it's amazing like five years uh, later and I mean it's uh, it's something that uh, we didn't expect when we started. Well, no. 
I think both uh, have uh, potential, but I don't know if uh, we can uh, keep for 50 years uh, and see as well. I, I, I'm not sure if uh, today we make wines to keep for 50 years, but I, I trust more in the potential of uh, what they as, as a, a, a regular wine, you know. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Olga, I have a question for you, if, if my connection is working okay. Um, it may have been asked already, so I apologize if I'm repeating. Um, can you um, let me know, have you changed anything in the winemaking over the years? Have you discovered new techniques that you're employing now? Uh, well, um, we always try to improve our winemaking. And I think that uh, with the years, we make less things in our winemaking. I, I, I suppose that it is because we know much better our grapes and, and, our, uh, and, and our vineyards. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, uh, we use much more dry yeast, for example. We use much more new oak than, than we use now. And uh, we extract more from our grapes than now. Uh, we are trying with uh, different agents as uh, some amphoras uh, that we have to, to play, some concrete, and we use whole uh, bunches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whole bunches whole with, the green part, uh, with the green parts in some uh, barrels, uh, and depending on the vintage, we, we don't have any receipt, but I would say that uh, we know much better our our grapes and, and we don't have to make uh, a lot of technical things. We try to to come back to the essence in the winemaking. Mm -hmm. I think that I makes sense. I think it comes through in the wines today. Oh, I have a question. Yeah, Excuse me. I think as well that the, the, the wine market and the wine world uh, has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, or, or my opinion, I, I was very focused in uh, using the best oak and the best um, uh, uh, new oak in the, in the barriques and a lot of extraction, good turnings and uh, and now I am a little bit more, a little bit uh, relaxed about that uh, and I think much more in the vintage and how can we uh, do our best with the grapes and with the vintage. I think it is because we suffer a lot in 17 with the, with the frost uh, and, oh, yes. and <laughs> the, the, the helium uh, problem and I, I don't know, <laughs> uh, it was uh, crazy last year and, and now we, we have to only to show uh, our land uh, through the wines without any makeup, uh, you know. Olga, with the uh, Godello, do you do you stir the lees or do you just allow the lees to settle in the tank and in the barrel and interact with the wine that way? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, with the wines, we move the lees, but uh, we at the beginning uh, we move the lees much more uh, once per week, uh, but we uh, it, it's not a receipt. It's not every year five months once per week. Mm -hmm. We uh, taste and we uh, decide if uh, the wine needs more badonage or we stop and rack the wines. And for the reds, for, um, for the uh, young, for, for Viernes, we keep uh, the wine a little bit dirty with the lees and we don't move the lees in, the, in Viernes. We, we just keep the wine on lees because of the protection. But if the leaves are not good, 
if they smell uh, reduced, we remove uh, from the wine. It's not uh, every year the same. It depends on the quality of the leaf or the red. For example, when we put wines on barrel, after malolactic in the reds, um, we rack just the, the, the bad leaves, the, 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 the worst, the worst leaves, but we keep the fine ones. And we put the wines on barrel with that leaves. And we uh, don't rack the barriques. We keep the wines with the leaves in the in the in the barrels. If when we if when when I taste, if I uh, smell anything wrong, like re reduction or something, we rack, clean, and put wine in the barrels again. So we don't have any receipt. But our philosophy is to keep the wines dirty because they are more protective and they will be more complex. Thank you. That's perfect. Uh, Olga, you uh, you make uh, or have made a Godeo five years on the lees. Um, is any of that wine still available? And, and can you speak to that wine a little bit? I have a I have some in Texas, so. It was uh, that that wine was like casualty. Uh, it was a time that uh, we have in the winery on lease, and we don't uh, we, we don't like uh, a lot. We decided don't put it in the in the as much with the with the selection. And after years, uh, we tried and and we love that wine. And it was uh, the way to show the potential that, that we were talking about, the potential of uh, uh, the Godello. Mm -hmm. And 2011 was, well, I, I, I was not here, but it was a very warm year. Mm -hmm. It was not the best year here, but the white is amazing. And uh, it has potential to keep growing in the bottle. Mm -hmm. So, we, we decided to, to bottle it just to, to show that kind of potential. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that kind of wines here in El Vierto. So why not it's mm -hmm. just a little bit and we decided to, to bottle it. Well, it's delicious and it's interesting. It's very different. Um, there's a question about, uh, well, first, congratulations on being named number 34 in the Wine Spectator Top 100 with your Menthia. Um, the question was, do you, do you remember or do you know of any other uh, Bierzo wineries that have, have been in the top 100 other than Petalos, uh, the Palacios one? Well, uh, I don't know if Palacios is uh, was uh, in the top 100 something from Palacios. Petalos, he said that. But uh, yes, I think last year uh, uh, it was Petalos from uh, Palacios. And uh, we have been very lucky because we have been there two times. Two mm -hmm. times with the Godelia Memphia. And the other one was with Godelia Selección Godelio. And for Godelia Selección Godelio, it was in the winter 2010. And for the Mencias, it was the winters 2012 and 2015. So it's uh, quite good. But uh, I think there's uh, in the top 100 uh, from Bierzo only Petalos. Uh, 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 we and also Petalos last year, but we haven't been following the top 100 uh, before starting the winery, so we never know. But uh, yeah. I, I think the video that there is. Uh, was any any time in the top 100? No, thing. I'm not sure about that. I know about Petalos, but no, no, any other. But all other what they used to, but especially from Valdeorra, not from here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful. Uh, well, are you sure? We'll mm -hmm. see you soon in person, we hope. Mm -hmm. We hope so. Mm -hmm.